At its core, strategy is a process of collective inquiry. You're trying to answer four questions. Where are we now? Where do we want to go? Why? How do we get there? Developing a strategy boils down to answering these four questions. That's it. If you spend half an hour at your desk answering these questions to the best of your ability, you have successfully completed a strategic planning process. It doesn't require a special skill set or a convoluted process. However, developing good strategy is a craft, and like all crafts, it takes lots of practice to do well. Furthermore, it's not just something you do once and then you're done. Thinking and acting strategically needs to be embedded in your day-to-day -day work. So what makes a good strategy? A good strategy outlines a vision and a clear set of priorities. This includes what not to do. A good strategy also provides principles or guideposts that help you make good decisions about how best to achieve your vision and priorities. Think of it as a kind of compass. These navigational aids are especially important in the heat of the moment when stress and other factors may lead us to make moves that run counter to our longer term goals. Finally, a good strategy tells a story. It has all the elements of a story, including characters, a setting, a plot. Like a good story, a good strategy is emotionally compelling. It's often more about the questions than the answers. Good strategy is not a recipe. Context matters, not just for the strategy itself, but for developing the strategy. Your group size, its stage of development, the competitive ecosystem, and so forth. What one group does to be more strategic won't necessarily work with all groups. Good strategy also isn't a one-off. This is the biggest mistake groups make when it comes to strategy. They develop one, and they think they're done. To actually become more strategic, you have to constantly revisit and refine your strategy. How do you develop a good strategy? First, remember that the goal of a strategy isn't to have a strategy. It's to act strategically. You want to achieve your vision in a way that's consistent with your values. You want to move from a place where everyone is operating on their own individual assumptions and moving in their own ways, to one where everyone has a shared understanding and is moving in alignment with a shared intention. Simply having a good strategy isn't enough to make sure that you and your group act strategically. In a way, this is good. You don't have to wait forever to develop the perfect strategy because that's not how it works. But it also means that developing good strategy is having a learning process in place where you're constantly going through cycles of aligning, acting, and reflecting. The more you do this, the more you build up your muscles for both developing strategy and for acting strategically. Strategy needs to be a habit. It means investing at least 10% of your time and resources into pausing taking a moment to get your thinking or your actions organized. This includes simply taking a breath in the moment while you're in the thick of things to making time for more extended strategic conversations. Another important habit is always asking why. In the moment, it means reminding yourself of why you're doing something. In moments of deeper reflection, it means going even deeper, asking why repeatedly. One other important strategic habit is to compensate for your blind spots. This means having the self-awareness to know what your blind spots are, both individual and collective. It means proactively getting other perspectives and trying other techniques to counter your cognitive biases. What does all of this look like in practice? Let's start by reviewing. Strategy is a process of collective inquiry. You're trying to answer four questions. Where are we now? 
Where do we want to go? Why? How do we get there? For your particular situation, you're going to have many other questions that will loosely fall under these categories. For example, if you own a restaurant that sells pizzas, you might be wondering, how many pizzas are we selling right now? What is the market for pizza in my region overall? What trends might impact pizza consumption and sales? Start by tracking these questions. Remember what we said before about a good strategy acting as a navigational aid that helps you make decisions? Well, your questions act as a first version of this compass. Keep this compass in front of you as often as possible. Constantly refer to it, show it to others, and most importantly, update it. As you start exploring these questions further, you can start penciling in answers. Inevitably, more questions will crop up. Add those too. Pay attention to the kinds of questions you're asking, using your compass as a way to see patterns and gaps. Do you have lots of questions that are about where you are now, but few questions about where you want to go? If so, start asking and exploring more future-oriented questions to balance out your inquiry. The beautiful thing about questions is that they not only help you get more clear, but they invite ideas from others. You should always involve as many stakeholders as possible in your strategy process. You should also include outside perspectives as a way to counter groupthink. More perspectives lead to better thinking. Those who participate will also feel greater ownership over the outcomes. This is all hard work. Our inclination is often to try to outsource the struggle, to have someone else make meaning of the data or make recommendations in order to save you and your people time. This is well-intentioned, but misguided. Again, the goal is not to have a strategy, it's to act strategically. Acting strategically requires muscles, and you can't develop muscles without struggling. Remember, your strategy is a story and a set of guideposts. You will need to constantly reassess and refine it because you can't predict the future and you don't know what you don't know. Keep at it and stay diligent about developing both your strategy and your strategy muscles.